So when looking for my first car, I wanted something kind of sporty with a manual gearbox, you know, maybe a little Toyota or something. I just wanted to some, something I could race around in as a, as a young man, but uh, my father had other ideas. You see, he wanted me to get something safe. And so one day he approached me and said, listen, I'm going to help you pay for half of your new car, but you have to get what I choose. I was, of course, not very happy about this until he actually showed me the car he had in mind, which was a 1981 Mercedes-Benz 280 SE. It was in a lovely brown kind of color, uh, very unique, a kind of a, I don't even know how to explain it, but a uh, sparkly brown color. Uh, and it looked fantastic. It was massive, it had leather seats, it had prestige. And of course I snapped up the offer straight away. I was very unhappy that it was a automatic gearbox, but you know, beggars can't be choosers and this big massive honking machine was going to be my first car. I never really forgot the feeling of driving this big old car and all my co-workers at my first job kind of uh, out of jealousy making fun of me saying that I uh, needed to have flight attendants in the car in order to help people in the back seat because it was so big and uh, calling it the log because of its weird brown color. But every opportunity I was always called to take people around in it because it was just such a comfortable car and it had a certain amount of prestige. Especially most people know me, I like to wear a suit. It really, really fit my style and it always stuck with me as being probably the best, most quality car I'd ever owned. Winston and I, when we uh, get together for drinks, we often talk about the cars that we once owned. And now that we have this car channel, Worthless Whips, we figured, you know, it'd be kind of cool to go chase down either the cars that we owned or the cars that left an impression on us or cars that we've always wanted, but in pretty bad condition so we can get a pretty good deal. Now, when he showed me pictures of this brown log, I, as a Mercedes fan, liked the fact that it was a big, comfortable luxury car from Mercedes-Benz, but at the same time, um, you know, I had some misgivings. I know what a ball like these old German cars can be to fix and I knew Winston would have a huge task ahead of him if, you know, we found one that had severe problems. The funny thing is, I also looked up some of the SEC models and they were way too expensive for a worthless whip, but I did find out that the SEL versions, which uh, in America we got the 420 SEL, so that was a 4.2 liter V8, um, and it's a luxury edition. It's like a, a long, long wheelbase version, basically. Has a sort of, kind of a mafia-esque, almost dictator-esque vibe to it. And it turns out that, yeah, around the world, a lot of mafia organizations tended to use this long wheelbase in black version of the 420 or the 500 SEL as their car of choice. You know, things like the Yakuza and stuff like that, but also dictators. Dictators loved this car. And I thought, this this is a really good opportunity for a pretty funny episode if we end up finding one, you know, in black. And we actually did. So what we did was we took an Uber all the way up to some random ghetto of uh, north of L.A. I believe it was called Ontario. And I'm not talking about Canada. And uh, it was just a pretty rough area. There was cops everywhere, people getting arrested on the sidewalk. Uh, you know, the, the apartment complex that we walked into to be able to buy the car, we had chickens running around it. It was, it was a weird vibe. But when we set our eyes on the car, well, I'll let the footage do the talking. It's a piece of crap. Well, we tried to start it in the um, hose, you know, that leads from the electronic fuel pump, which is down below, burst. It's so old it just bursts and there's fuel all over the floor down here. And um, it's not a good sign. There's quite a lot wrong with the car actually just from looking at it. It looks pretty rough. Oof. Seats look alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean those will clean up. Mm. This will clean up quite nicely. This is bad though here. Yeah. You know this is going to need a little bit of Love. body work. Mm. We got like clear coat fading over there. Got like tint peeling off the windows. Mm. You know, it's all pretty rough. It's definitely a smoker's car, mm. which sucks because you can smell that, you know. Let's see what we can do with that. If I look in the engine bay, 
I have a feeling there's supposed to be a cowling here. You know? I feel like there should be cowling. I could be wrong. Otherwise, everything else kind of looks like it's more or less where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, we did start it briefly before the fuel line blew up. And um, it didn't have that timing chain slap that a lot of these old ones have, which is expensive to fix. I mean, if we can get a, a decent you know, amount, a decent price on this, we can buy it, but it's got to be decent. Because, Straight off from a grand. Yeah. Because we're taking a chance, you know? Yeah. I'd say max, we go up to 1.5. Yeah, it doesn't leave us very much wiggle room with the repairs, though. It doesn't. I mean, look, it doesn't have the hood liner. That's going to be... Well, if you want to get an original Mercedes anything, it's expensive. So we'll just not get an original Mercedes mm. thing. This will be a, a little bit of a labor of love trying to get it back. Let's see if we can get it moving. Yeah. That's the most important thing is to see if it starts and doesn't leak. Oh, actually, no, the oil's actually not too bad. bad. Can you explain why that fuel, uh, fuel line would have burst? Old. Very old line. Just rotten. There's a lot of pressure, you know, like... First of all, in these 126, what happened with my one anyway is the fuel pump went out twice on it. It's just a known point of failure. And so what's happening is this, there's too much pressure. It's a very old style fuel injection system. It's a very old school. So it's basically pumping a lot of pressure right there into the hose. And that hose is obviously just so old and worn out and it looks like people have been messing around down there. So that's a point of wear and it just exploded. Right. It's literally a hole that I could stick my finger into right. in the hose. So I've, what I've done is I've just cut off a section. The guy, the seller, has run off to go and fetch some replacement hose and some hose clamps and hopefully we can fix it. But it has to be done right, otherwise we could be driving down the highway and it'll just mm. burst off again and we'll be stranded. So we don't want that to happen. Sure. Here we got these old style fuses. Um, one missing here, and this is for the... Oh man, why is it going to be in German? It smells like piss. It does, actually. What is a proof... N proof number? Oh, that's obviously a proof number. 16 is what? 16 is... Nothing. <laughs> okay. So it's supposed to be empty, I guess? Okay. But yeah, all the fuses seem to be intact. I don't see any broken fuses. This one looks dodgy as all hell. Over there. What is number five? Backup lamp, heating water valves, water pump, climate control system. Ah, that's right. Yeah. This climate control system. Makes sense why this is all weird. It probably was starting to smoke. So there's probably a fault. It keeps blowing. Somebody put a higher amperage fuse to stop it from blowing, and that's why the smoke coming gotcha. out. So that's why we're not going to turn on the AC at all. What are your impressions? I think this guy was really tall. <laughs> he actually was. He's like seven feet tall. Yeah. It's like sitting in an airplane or something. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like captain's chair stuff, you know? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> broom, broom. Broom, broom. It's got 206,000 miles on it. Oh boy, what are we getting ourselves into, dude? Well, every, if we like every time we do this, I feel like instant regret, but I think that's what you're supposed to feel. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, like this is it's kind of like a, an adventure. You never know if you're going to make it home or not. Right. We're a good almost 200 miles from home. We do have AAA though. Yeah. We have got to get this insurance first. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got to buy it first, then I'll insure it. Let's not buy it unless it starts. Yes. Can we of feel? course. Yeah. Okay. Come on. We're going to drive it back or not. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not buying something I can't drive home. <laughs> All right, so the idea is up here, if I can get that. Yeah, I think it'll work. We might only need to use two of these hose clamps. Okay. Got to make sure they're super tight. What tools do you need? Um, I've actually got everything I need here. I just use this Leatherman. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you have the other one? Yeah, I need that hose. Where is it? Where did I put it? Uh, it's not here. Don't know. Where did you put Am it? Am I lying on it, maybe? Yeah, oh, yeah I, it's I, right I, here. I, I, yeah, <laughs> thank you, man. I've got it now. You yeah. might have to cut it because it might be too long. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Okay. Let me just get it hooked up to the, 
to the, the middle line up there first. Okay. Put that away from him so he's yeah, not sure. poking him. Thank you. Uh, Good idea. On his head. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Is that the tool? Yeah. Here's the tool. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Okay. Don't stab yourself. I'll try my best. <laughs> I love Thank to you. get gas in my hair. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> it smells great. My wife loves it. I always <laughs> love that. <laughs> okay, so now we need enough slack. We're good, I just need to tighten this and then we can test it again. And hopefully it will work. Where are you from, man? Originally Nigeria. Oh yeah, I'm originally from South Africa. South Africa? Yeah. <laughs> Why are your people killing everybody? You better ask those Totsis, man. Those Totsis, they want to kill everyone, they don't care. Man, you know? That's they, not cool. Yeah, they suck, man. They're killing my, my family, my friends. What? Yeah, man, they're just useless. I can't stand them, you know. Wait, other people are never your problem. Yeah, it's weird, eh? Wait. Bloody South, a South Africans suck, man. They're really bad people. Not me, of course. I'm fine. No, you're you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It's all clear. It's all good. I'm gonna try to turn it over. Okay. okay. Map. Give me some gas. Yeah, I'll give it some gas. Not too much. That is yeah. It's, well, it's not leaking, right? Nope. Nope. It's dry. It's good now. Dude, you're kind of greasy. That's from my hair, okay? From lying on the ground. It's, uh... Oops. It's part of this job, eh? If you want to mess around with old cars, you get filthy. True. Ugh, sucks though. Should have bought a spare t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I'll come forward a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. This is definitely negative. Yeah, okay, just making sure. Red cables on both sides. All right, that looks good. Let me try to turn it over. It. Let's try this. Shake hands. <laughs> Cold hard chin. Give it to him to count. Cool. So it's driving. Yes, it is. It's just got an insurance. We should get Geico to sponsor us. It takes like one minute. Yeah, we should. <laughs> it's like, why do I feel like I'm so far away from everything? It's insane, isn't it? Where's the, this has got to be adjustable, right? Oh yeah, it is, look. Oh, okay. It's, it's rough though. Yeah. It's super rough. There we go. That feels better. Wheel bearings need to be replaced. I can like tell a, you that. It's like a wagon. Yeah. Like but, not like a station wagon. It's putting a smile on my face though because this reminds me of back in the day. Makes sense. It's my first car. Yeah. Except way worse. <laughs> and way better at the same time if that makes any sense. Not whatsoever. at all. Okay. Would love some AC. Not happening. All right, dude, so where's our petrol station? <laughs> okay, let's start her up. Oh, okay, what do you think our chances are? I'm gonna give it 45%, but yeah, getting home. It's tough, there's definitely something wrong with the suspension up mm. there. The, the car is behaving a little weird, mm. and there's like, when you brake, that whole front end is weird. The tires were all kind of flat, and I don't think they hold pressure. But we've gassed her up, we've got, we've got... It smells like urine. Air in the tires, yeah. Um, all the fluids are right, so... Yeah. I'm just gonna take it easy, you know, no, no fast moves, so to speak. All right, let's do so this. No, they're not, yeah, let's, let's put in our coordinates and hopefully we get back. Holy crap. It's hot. It's hot. Open your window. It's gonna take one day. No, it's not. So wait, I gotta go left, go left, yeah. Left. Na, 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 na. 
no one left. Saw a car with bullet holes in it. We did. We saw um, chickens run out of an apartment. We did. Which makes me think there's some Chinese people nearby. <laughs> Possibly. They like the pollos. <laughs> they do. Mm. This dude like wants to prove a point in his little Corolla. Yeah, it is a Corolla. Isn't it? Is that the new one? Uh, yeah, sure. This thing handles like a boat. It is. It's one thing oh, I love great. about it. Great. <laughs> Traffic. It is comfy. It is. It's super comfy. It's very springy. Yeah. That's because it's got worn shocks. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's a trash heap, but I'm hoping we can change it around, you know? Honestly, it's just getting it home first, dude. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I don't want to think about anything other than getting this home. We're going to baby it because we can't... I don't want that thing to blow out again, you know, that hose. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of scary. Yeah. It could overheat, we don't know. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. And we've got about a hundred miles to cover. this new piece of crap we bought over. First of all, why you guys keep buying junk? And <laughs> this is so old and gross. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna make it nice. The governor in China, they either use Hongqi or either use this. Yeah, a lot of uh, sort of dictators have used this car. Yeah, that leather. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, exactly. It looks like poop. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea for now. My pit bull is there. What the heck? Yeah, I guess he likes dogs. Okay. I bet there smell like dog piss in there. It does. Oh. <laughs> I'm smart. Yeah. Yeah. No. How can you make make money through this? All right, Dr. Milk, we have a new vehicle in the shop, so what do you say we go through this thing and see what's wrong with it? Await my diagnosis. <laughs> All right, definitely the first thing that shouts out at me is this massive damage to the rear over here. So the rear driver's side needs pretty much a lot of bodywork and that kind of crap. There's a lot of um, clear coat damage as well. Now it's faded through, looks terrible. So from the outside, as I go towards the front of the car, the other thing I notice, which is absolutely despicable, is this terrible tint, this failed window tint that's just, you know, it's peeling off, but it just makes the car look disgusting. Okay. As I get to the front of the car, I notice that the front tires, and it is on both sides, are completely bald, and in fact, driving on those, I'm pretty sure it's illegal, but Never mind illegal, it's incredibly unsafe. Mm. To be honest, I think probably the most important thing is to get it to pass smog. Yeah. <laughs> Can't really drive without that. No, so let's see if we can get underneath this hood and take a quick look. I did forget to mention that there's a massive crack in the windscreen. Yay. Which is something that seems to be on every single car we buy. There's something very special about these cars, something that I like a lot. And it's not that noise. <laughs> In fact, I hate that. <laughs> These cars are like a mechanic's dream to work on because they have special hinges that you can, if I remember how they work. Yeah, okay. Pull that down. Pull this down. Come on. There we go. See? allows you to actually put the hood completely up. How cool is that? Pretty cool. I mean, if you're a mechanic, hood's completely out of the way. True. Most cars, you actually have to take the hood take off. Take it off, yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, now I could literally stand inside the engine bay, right. you know, and get to work, which is something I find incredibly cool. Nice. Anyway, okay, so 
sunroof, like all these old Mercedes, is not working. So we can hear a motor running, but the sunroof doesn't respond. So that's going to be a, an interesting one to look at. We did take it to smog and it failed. Yes. So um, I have a couple of things that I'm going to do, but we'll leave that for the main videos. Mm -hmm. But that's definitely something we have to look at. It's got to do with the emissions control. We have to do general maintenance on this motor, but it runs and drives fantastic. It's smooth. I can attest to that. Yeah, buttery smooth. So mechanically, it's probably about 70, 60, 70% there. Okay. Oh, and don't forget, we have a bad window. Driver's side window does not go up and down. And the rear windows either. A couple of little things like that. All right, so what is your diagnosis? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the first part of this episode. This one's gonna be a two-parter, as you guys know, because of the whole coronavirus situation. Uh, it's been really difficult to get out and film anything meaningful. So this was, you know, the first bit of our journey, getting the car, diagnosing the car, and the next one will be us fixing it up and trying to flip it. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying sanitized, staying sane. And a special shout out to all our patrons that are supporting us that actually voted on the cars that we end up buying and working on. We'll catch you on the next episode of Worthless Whips. Peace out.